Thank you. So now our next speaker uh, is His Grace uh, Balabhadra Prabhu. As you know, he was the Minister of Car Protection for a long time, for almost a decade. And he has a gosala, not only cows, he keeps bulls. And he has good understanding. And he lives in uh, Alachua, Florida. He used to live in uh, uh, sorry, Gainesville. He used to live in uh, New Brindavan, which was our West Virginia community. So please give a warm welcome to Balavadra Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. How's everybody? Um, it's been quite the morning listening to all these wonderful presentations and I was thinking, what am I going to say? <laughs> and then the next person was, would speak and I would say, hmm, what am I going to say? Um, I would like to start reading some words from Srila Prabhupada who has inspired a lot of us, myself included, um, and what keeps me pushing on in cow protection. So this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 24, Text Number 5, Matsya, the Lord's Fish Incarnation. And the translation is, Sri Sukadev Goswami said, O king, for the sake of protecting the cows, brahmanas, demigods, devotees, the Vedic literature, religious principles, and principles to fulfill the purpose of life, the Supreme Personality of Godhead accepts the forms of incarnations. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead generally appears in various types of incarnations to give protection to the cows and brahmanas. The Lord is described as Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha. In other words, he is always eager to benefit the cows and brahmins. When Lord Krishna appeared, he purposefully, let me say that again, he purposefully became a cowherd boy and showed personally how to give protection to the cows and calves. From the Lord's personal activities, human society should learn how to give protection specifically to the Brahmins and cows. Then, the protection of religious principles, fulfillment of the aim of life, and protection of Vedic knowledge can be achieved. Without protection of cows, Brahminical culture cannot be maintained. And without Brahminical culture, the aim of life cannot be fulfilled. The Lord, therefore, is described as Go Brahmana Hitaya because his incarnation is only for the protection of the cows and Brahmins. Unfortunately, because in Kali Yuga there is no protection of the cows in Brahminical culture, everything is in a precarious position. If human society wants to be exalted, the leaders of society must follow the instructions of Bhagavad Gita and give protection to the cows, the Brahmins, and Brahminical culture. So this is one of my favorite um, verses and purports because Srila Prabhupada is spelling it out step by step. If we do this, then this, these different activities will be protected. If we do this, then other things will come to be. And if 
We want human society to be exalted. Then it is imperative that we protect the cows and Brahmins. So these are very specific instructions and it's basically the same thing that everybody who has spoken today has been talking about the importance of protecting cows. Now, <clears throat> if milk is your main concern, I think that it should be put a little way to the side. In Vedic times, <clears throat> cows were not bred to produce milk. Cows were bred to produce bulls. There was no tractors, there was no diesel, there was no question of doing agriculture with machinery because it didn't exist. So, cows were bred to produce bulls. The second reason that cows were bred was for gober, to maintain the level of gober so that agricultural, the, the land could be nourished. Um, it was also used for, for certain medicines and <clears throat> it was used in many applications in the house, making a, a new floor in the house, making tiles, um, so many different things. Uh, one of the biggest economic um, things that was going on in the village, especially for the women, was making cow dung cakes. And this was used for cooking. It was cooking fuel. And Prabhupada told us that cooking with cow dung cakes would give nice flavor, the best flavor to the prasada. And Bhakti Raghava Maharaj, he also uses um, cow dung on his cell phone, or at least he did when he visited me. Uh, he wanted some fresh cow dung to put on his cell phone to um, block it from the radioactive uh, aspect. <laughs> so we have that on, 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 uh, on video. If you go to our YouTube channel, ISCOWP, I-S-C-O-W-P-108, you can see the uh, short video of Maharaj putting the cow dung on his cell phone. The third reason that, that cows was bred was for urine, also used for agriculture and medicine. The fourth reason that cows were bred, and it wasn't even considered a reason, it was considered a byproduct, it was milk. Yeah, they said, it'll come automatically, so we don't have to, it's not the main concern. The main concern is bulls. Now, what is so important about bulls? Srila Prabhupada has, has told us many times in Srimad Bhagavatam that Dharma religious principles comes in the form of the bull. So, we are facing a big problem in Kali Yuga. The cows and the bulls are being murdered. I mean, there's no other word that I like to use. The simple fact is that the cows and the bulls are being murdered. And if we look at the condition of society now, now the four legs of the cow and the four legs of the bull are considered to be the four pillars of religious life. Truthfulness, cleanliness, mercy and austerity. Now in Kali Yuga, there is only one leg left of the cow and bull. And even that leg is, is very, very shaky, very wobbly. And that leg is truthfulness. We can see all over the planet today, the so-called politicians, the so-called rulers of the planet, there is little to no truthfulness. And they're all basically uh, with their big eagles trying to see who can get the most land, who can get the most money, who can win the most wars, like this. So when we allow the cows and the bulls to go 
to the slaughterhouse. The four legs of religious life are being continued to be knocked away from society. So as cow protectors, it is very important for us to minimize the number of animals that are going to the slaughterhouse. And as soon as we can bring that number down to zero, then we will see changes in the social structure. So this is the humble, the humble prayer from myself, from every speaker who has spoken today, is how can we stop the cows and bulls from being murdered? Now, in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada explains how Maharaj Pariksit, he was approached <clears throat> and he was given a message that there was a cow and bull being beaten. And Maharaj Pariksit said, in my kingdom? How was that possible? And what did he do? He stood up and he went to check. Is this actually happening in my kingdom? So he went and he checked and he saw, yes, this is going on. So immediately he arrested Kali. So Maharaj Pariksha did what we need to do. That means that we stand up and we fight against this um, hideous activity of murdering the cows and bulls. Not that we just you know, listen to somebody talk and then we don't do anything. But it's our responsibility as lovers of God, lovers of the cow and bull, to stand up and fight in whichever way we can to help minimize, at this point in time, the murder of the cows and bulls. Hmm. It's a war. We're at war. So we need to do what we have to do. When the next break comes, I will be in the area where the tables are set up uh, with the products. I have some of our newsletters. If anybody would like a copy, then I would be more than happy to give you a copy. My wife and I incorporated as ISCOP, the International Society for Cow Protection, in 1990. <clears throat> we have been taking care of cows. Currently, we have 24 cows and bulls uh, in our care. And um, we feel that it's very important that people live with cows. It'll change your lives. The cows are in the mode of goodness. So when we live with the cows, we're living with the mode of goodness. When we are serving the cows, we are serving the mode of goodness. And that helps to change our lives also to the mode of goodness. Can I have one more minute? Okay. Um, my wife and I, we, we lived at Gita Nagri, which is a very successful farm community. Um, we were there from 1990 to 19, I'm sorry, 1980 to 1990. And as a young man, I had a big problem with anger. And I went specifically to Gita Nagri to learn how to work with the bulls. And the devotee who trained me, his, his name was Parmananda. He was a wonderful person. But there was a lady who came to the temple, to Gita Nagari. Um, she lived in New York. She was a psychologist. And she would come to Gita Nagari quite often. And one day I was coming up the lane from the barn with a team of oxen. I was going into the wood to get some firewood for the temple. And she was coming up from the temple. And she was motioning to me to stop. So as I got close to her, I stopped, team of oxen stopped. 
And she said, you know, Balabhadra, I've been watching you for quite some time. And it seems that the more that you work with the oxen, that you're getting more and more mellow. You're more and more becoming free from this uh, disease of anger. And it was true. I still get <laughs> I still get angry every once in a while. But the power, the potency of uh, living with and serving um, the cows and bulls is, is very powerful. I can only ask that you all try and live with cows and bulls. It'll change your lives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of the comments so far. Um, I have been working with cows since 1980, and in the last and in the last 20 years, um, have been working with a lot of youth, in particular, who are not Hindus. Uh, some come to the temples on Sunday for feasts like that, um, but there is a huge amount of people who are identifying themselves as vegans, who are actually allies in this war against killing mother cow and father bull. They have, when there's war, different allies will take up different methods of attack. So the vegan movement has become huge. Hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. And they basically are boycotting commercial dairy, which basically leads to uh, every single cow in the commercial dairy, whether they're uh, milking cows or calves or bulls, will be murdered. So they are not willing to support the commercial dairy, which is founded on cruelty and murder. And because of them, <clears throat> every once in a while now, there's an article coming in the newspaper or some form of um, media that farmers are going out of business because they can't sell the milk. The um, business means supply and demand. So if the demand is going down, the supply also has to go down. And that is minimizing this source. The commercial dairy industry is the biggest supplier of animals to the meat slaughterhouse industry. So um, if somehow or another they could be included also, they are not going to be so aware of the, the Hindu aspect. Um, but if they can be recognized as allies in this war against murdering mother cow, that would be very nice. <laughs>